Hey guys, welcome back to Rest News 365. Hope everyone is doing very well. As always, there is a ton of news stories to get into today. And we're obviously, as always, going to be talking about some Impact Wrestling, specifically some really big stories coming out of the latest round of Impact Wrestling television tapings. Now, of course, like we spoke about yesterday, we are now living in this new reality, of, I guess the normal reality prior to the pandemic, but we're living in this reality now here on the channel anyway, uh, where a lot of the things we're going to be talking about involve what has already happened at the Impact Wrestling television taping. So, of course, there's going to be a spoiler warning before the videos we get into today. But also, uh, we will be talking about these things once they have aired on Impact Wrestling Television. Because, for example, and this is probably something we'll talk about tomorrow, uh, considering tomorrow is Impact Wrestling on Access TV Day. Uh, Impact have already started to announce some of these things and kind of try and get ahead of the spoilers, I think is the best way to put it as well. So we are going to be talking about quite a few things that have happened at the Impact Wrestling television tapings over the course of the last few days. Of course, the reasons we now know about the things and events that have happened at the Impact Wrestling television tapings is because fans are once again in attendance at the event. So obviously, this is a big spoiler warning going ahead. So we'll give you a five second countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. One, let's move on to the first story of the day, and that is a new number one contender. A surprising new number one contender for the Impact World Championship. That being Impact Wrestling star, former WWE superstar, Brian Myers. Now, I don't think anyone, anyone saw this one coming or would have seen this coming. And it feels like a very odd selection, doesn't it? Now... To give a bit of background and context to this, so this will air on television at some course at some point over the course of the next couple of weeks. Now, Don Callis, in a segment, announced a number one contenders battle royal for the Impact Emergence Special. Now, this is going to be a special that I'm assuming, like last year, is going to air on Access TV. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be two nights. Last year it was two nights. This year it might just be one night. Nevertheless... It's um, going to be headlined by an Impact World Championship opportunity. Now, uh, subsequently, on an upcoming episode of Impact Wrestling, there is going to be uh, this battle royal to determine the number one contender for said Impact World Championship. Now, they had the battle royal, and surprisingly, shockingly, it was won by Brian Myers to become the new number one contender for Kenny Omega and that Impact World Championship at Impact Emergence, which, again, I'm assuming is going to air on Access TV. Now, when I saw this, when I saw this, and a couple of people reached out to me yesterday and said, like, you know, have you seen this? Brian Myers, Impact Wrestling uh, World Championship number one contender. What a bizarre selection. I mean, really, what a bizarre selection. The only reason I say that is, look, when last year when Brian Myers was released by WWE, I was a big advocate for him going to Impact Wrestling because I thought that was the best place for him, you know. I, and I don't know if I ever really saw him becoming an Impact World Champion, but I said, you know, it's a possibility. And when you go from a company like WWE where there's an obvious ceiling and you go to a company like, like Impact Wrestling, there's opportunities. And who knows? Anything can happen. The issue why I say this is a, a, just a real big surprise and just feels bizarre is is because Brian Myers realistically, yes, he's been featured on Impact Wrestling Television ever since last year, since he debuted. Yes, he's had feuds with, you know, your Tommy Dreamers or your Matt Cardonas, etc. But realistically, he's not done all that much of substance that would equate to someone saying this guy should be challenging for the Impact World Championship. It just feels very odd, especially which, and again, I don't mean this as a disrespect to people on the Impact Wrestling roster, but... If we had a world champion in Impact Wrestling that was a full-time member of the Impact Wrestling roster, for instance, Rich Swann. If Rich Swann was still the Impact World Champion and Brian Myers became the number one contender for a match on a, on a TV special for the World Championship, you go, that's fine. I mean, that's fine. They're giving Brian Myers a bit of exposure. Great for Brian Myers. I mean, I can't recall a time ever in any promotion that he was challenging for a world championship, even when he was doing the work with Impact uh, back in the GFW days and the GFW invasion. I can't recall a time he challenged for the Impact World Championship. I might be wrong with that. You can correct me in the comment section below. But if Rich Swan was the world champion or if Eric Young was the world champion or if Eddie Edwards was the world champion, you'd go, okay, Brian Myers, that's cool. But Kenny Omega being the Impact World Champion, again, I'm working with the assumption, and I don't know this to be a fact, I don't know that this to be completely accurate, but I'm working with the assumption that Kenny Omega probably is going to drop the championship at Bound for Glory in October. As I mentioned time and time again, those timelines add up for me, and we've seen the stories and the reports and the, uh, the discussions that Kenny Omega's 
Impact run and Impact World Championship reign has been meticulously laid out, going all the way back to December last year. The plan always was the six-man tag at Hard to Kill, the World Championship title versus title match at Rebellion, some defenses in between, the match at Slammiversary of Sammy Callahan, and I'm assuming now a World Championship defense, which I think will lead to a loss at Bound for Glory. That's been meticulously laid out. So they know there's a finite amount of time that Kenny Omega is going to be Impact Wrestling. There's a finite amount of matches of Kenny Omega in Impact. So because of that, uh, because of that, you need to make the most out of having Kenny Omega in Impact Wrestling. You need to make the most of what you have. You need to realize, okay, we've only got Kenny Omega for a select amount of matches. We need to ensure that anyone that faces Kenny Omega, even if they're going to beat him or they don't beat him, they get over. They feel bigger and better because of being in the ring with Kenny Omega. Now, you could argue that maybe that hasn't realistically happened at this point. I think the match at Hard to Kill in January, I felt that Moose significantly got over in that match. Despite them not winning that match, I felt Moose felt like a bigger star for being in that match. You could argue that the match of um, uh, at Rebellion with, with Kenny Omega defeating Rich Swan, did Rich Swan really benefit from that in the long run? He competed in a tag team match at Slammiversary, which he lost. He's put over W. Morrissey since then. I think there is discussion about Rich One and a contract. I don't know whether he's re-signed, but an argument could be made that Rich One certainly doesn't feel bigger for working with Kenny Omega. That's fair. Sammy Callahan, I think, does feel bigger for working with Kenny Omega, even though going into Slammiversary, I wasn't massively keen on that feud. I thought they over-delivered in that main event at Slammiversary uh, this past Saturday. So... I just, I, again, that's a really important spot. I've, I've said this over and over again here on the channel. It's a really important spot who beats Kenny Omega, but it's also a really important spot whoever's going to be challenging him for that match. And for me, there are better options on the roster than Brian Myers. And I don't mean that as a disrespect to Brian Myers. I respect everything that the guy's done. He's been around for a long time. You know, very tenured wrestler, very experienced wrestler, does great work outside of pro wrestling. I think he trains people as well. Of course, he's got his own podcast. I mean, he's doing so many different things, and he's put in so many years and hard work into pro wrestling. Does he deserve to be featured in a major spot? Maybe. Maybe. But if I'm booking Impact Wrestling, I'm looking at other guys on that roster right now, and I'm saying, look, I don't know how many Kenny Omega matches we have left in Impact Wrestling, and if it does end with Kenny Omega, certainly, not AEW, but if it does end with Kenny Omega at Bound for Glory in October, we need to get as many stars over as possible. And you've got names that are ready to go. You've got names like a, an Ace Austin is a great example. You've got people like, I mean, I wouldn't say Josh Alexander for this spot because I think Kenny Omega is going to win. You do have to remember the outcome there, certainly. But there are people, like I mentioned, like Ace Austin, like Chris Bay. You know, names like that, which you go, look, they're not going to win. But certainly just having the match feels big and certainly would benefit them. They're young enough that being involved in a big time match against Kenny Omega helps elevate them. Now, obviously, Chris Bay's got his own stuff going on. But for me, this would be a perfect spot, a perfect spot for someone like Ace Austin. Yes, Ace Austin isn't going to win because that's not the plan. But certainly having a big time match against Kenny Omega would be incredibly beneficial for everyone involved. It just feels like a real a real decision out of left field. And to be honest, I just I don't really I just don't really get that. I really don't understand that. Especially as well, you have to look at when it comes to Brian Myers. Again, this is a guy that at Slammiversary on, on, on Saturday night, he was what, the second match on that show? Second match and he lost as well. I mean he didn't take the fall. Daniel Dashwood took the fall, but it just feels very it just feels very bizarre and out of left field. And it feels like a just a complete layup that, of course, Kenny Omega's not going to win. Brian Myers certainly isn't going to be the guy that defeats Kenny Omega for the Impact World Championship. This doesn't make any sense at all, does it? So, I don't know. I, I, I look at that and I saw that in the, in the spoilers and I found that very odd. It feels like just... There are better options available, but Impact Wrestling obviously are going to go that way. I just, and also as well, not just, you know, the match itself will be okay, but, and again, Brian Myers seems like an odd choice, but also as well, I just, I don't think many people are crying out for that. I, I really don't think hardly anyone, no fans are really crying out for when Kenny Omega came to Impact Wrestling. People weren't saying, oh, I really want to see Kenny Omega, Brian Myers. Well, what a match that would be. I don't think anyone was saying that. You know, Kenny Omega versus Eddie Edwards would make far more sense. They teased it at Under Siege. You know, Kenny Edwards, uh, uh, Kenny Omega, sorry, versus Ace Austin. I mean, that, that's a better choice. So, Kenny Omega versus Trey McGow. I mean, there, it's, there are many, many options there. And again, I just don't really, I don't see what ben, what benefits at all of uh, having Kenny Omega versus Brian Myers. I, I have to be honest with you there. So, that for me, I felt was very, very strange. But 
that's the direction that they're going in, certainly. Now, another spoiler warning, because and there's going to be a spoiler warning before every single news story we do today. So another spoiler warning, we'll give you a countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. Let's talk about Aiden English. Yes, now we saw at Slammiversary that Aiden English is making his way to Impact Wrestling. There was a vignette that aired during Slammiversary about the Drama King, and of course that was referencing to Aiden English. Now he is debuting at the latest set of Impact Wrestling television tapings in Nashville. Now the plan and what happened at these latest set of television tapings is for Aiden English to get a significant push in Impact Wrestling, so much so he was going to be and is involved in the mixed tag team tournament that is going to be happening at the Impact Wrestling Homecoming Special where they are going to determine the king and queen of Impact Wrestling. Now, during this tournament, we won't talk about who won it and stuff like that because I don't think it's necessary, even though there is a spoiler warning going on and all this kind of stuff. Uh, I don't think it's totally necessary to spoil the the, the, the closing result of it. But uh, we can say that you can see right there that Aiden English is teaming with Diana Porrazo uh, during that tournament. And uh, again, we won't talk about who won it or anything like that. But Aiden English, yes, is teaming with Diana Perazzo. And it does look like, without going into the results of the tournament, that he is getting a significant push in Impact Wrestling going forward. Which is fascinating to see. Because you think about this as a guy that's been not on the shelf. He's been doing you know some independent stuff. Of course, it's been very difficult to do independent stuff over the course of the last year or so because of COVID. But this is a guy that has been released by WWE. He was released back in April last year. And I don't know if there was interest from Impact Wrestling back then or AEW or MLW or Ring of Honor or anything like that. But we did a video here on the channel. And again, it must be around that period of time. It must be around around this time last year, actually. It must be in the, around the summertime of 2020. And I was a big advocate for Aiden English coming in to Impact Wrestling. The reason why I was a big advocate for Aiden English coming in to Impact Wrestling is because I think he's a multi-tool player. You know, not only is this a guy that was in, when he was in NXT, he was a tag team wrestler, so we know he can work as a tag team, he was an NXT tag team champion. But also, he's a very good in-ring worker. We know that he's got ability on the mic. He's a good manager when he was with Rusev. He was more of a mouthpiece manager figure during that period of time. He then transitioned into being a commentator, a color commentator like he was for 205 Live. So you've got a guy there that realistically can do kind of everything. He's got a very unique and distinctive voice. He can work. He can talk. He kind of ticks every single box there. So at the time last year when I was making the video talking about Aiden English, I was saying this is a guy... And I remember the commentary team at the time was Josh Matthews and Madison Rain. Thank goodness we have D'Lo Brown and Matt Stryker now, which is a far, far better commentary team. But look, there's room. If Aiden English wanted to, there's room for him to be on commentary for Impact Wrestling. I don't know if they're going to go in that direction. I would probably say not. I think they're relatively happy with Matt Stryker and D'Lo Brown going forward. But it looks to be as if these television tapings are any indication that Aiden English is getting a significant push in Impact Wrestling. Now, I don't know. If there are any plans to have Aiden English and Diona Perazzo be a team coming out of the Impact Homecoming tournament, I don't know if that is the case. I don't know if it's a case of, you know, sometimes like they did on WWE, the Mix and Match Challenge or the, what did they call it in Impact? They call it like, was it the Aces Wild Card Tournament or something like that? They did a tournament whereby, again, you picked, they do it kind of like in AEW now with the Battle Royal, but you picked out playing cards. And because of that, you got put together as a tag team, even though you didn't like them. I forget what it was called. It might be called like the Deuces Wild. I can't remember what it was called, but they did something kind of similar. I don't know if that was a mixed tag format. I think it was just a normal tag team uh, format. That's how you had the tag team of like Magnus and Samoa Joe and all that kind of stuff. I, I vividly remember that. I just can't remember what it was called. Anyway, I don't know if there are plans to have Aiden English and Diana Perazzo be a team coming out of it. Of course, we know Diana Perazzo has just lost her backup in Kimberly and Susan. I don't know if they're going. To, that's going to come back eventually and be a few uh, later on in the year. So maybe it could be a situation where Aiden English, <clears throat> excuse me, is the latest uh, partner for Diana Perazzo going forward. So I, I don't know. That's really interesting, though. And I think, I think that. Uh, He's a very talented guy, and I think that, you know, again, he's been on the sidelines for a while, even though he has been doing, I think he's been doing some independent stuff in Chicago, mostly. So it's an interesting one. I was very surprised to see the vignette. That was one of, that was a vignette that certainly did sort of take me by surprise, shall we say, uh, on Saturday. But I think he's very talented, and it'll be interesting to see what happens going forward. Now, 
Once again, another spoiler warning. Would you know it? Uh, but there's something else, another spoiler warning that we're going to talk about. And we did kind of touch on this yesterday. So if you watched yesterday's video, you will know about this. But we'll give you another countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. Let's talk about Diana Prazer once again and Mickey James and Melina. Now, we spoke yesterday talking about Deonna Prazo, talking about Mickey James, and talking about Molina as to the plans for Deonna Prazo's opponent for the Empower, NWA Empower, uh, all women's pay for you. Now, we spoke about that Mickey James was at the television tapings. Uh, we spoke about that the plan was uh, for uh, Deonna Prazo to face Molina. We didn't actually speak on uh, Mickey James. Honestly, the days just blur into each other at the moment, especially with all of the news about like Daniel Bryan, CM Punk today. Oh, it's just a crazy time in the world of pro wrestling. We spoke yesterday about Deonna Prazo facing Molina at NWA and Power and that Impact Wrestling officials do hope at some point to do Deonna Parazzo versus Mickey James but I think at the time there wasn't a lot of confirmation as to was Mickey James actually going to be at the television tapings. Now, as I'm recording right now, Impact Wrestling themselves have literally just announced that Mickey James is going to be at the television taping. So I guess this isn't much of a spoiler, but it does involve the NWA and Power Plan. So um, I guess we, we can um, we'll have that's why the 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 spoiler warning was there. So at the tapings, as we mentioned yesterday, Gianna Prazo, she cuts a promo to accept Mickey James's invite to wrestle at the NWA Empower pay-per-view. So that's how that uh, kicks off. But then this continued, this continued at the second day uh, of television tapings, which of course did involve the Impact Homecoming events and another episode of Impact Wrestling which is certainly interesting. Um, so, Diana Prazo's in the ring. She's talking about everything that's been going on in the last few weeks. And suddenly, she's interrupted by, once again, Mickey James in a similar vein that she was at Slammiversary. She brings Diana Prazo a contract for the NWA Empower pay-per-views, once again, confirming that Diana Prazo will be wrestling at that event. Now, Diana Prazo refuses to sign the contract without knowing her opponent, and then Mickey James introduces Deonna Parazzo's opponent for NWA Empower, confirming that it is going to be a knockouts championship match at the NWA event as well. She brings out former WWE superstar, former WWE women's champion, former Divas champion, and current NWA star Melina, who said she has plans to take the knockouts championship away from Deonna Parazzo on her first try, just like Deonna Parazzo did at Slammiversary last year. So this confirms the report that came out yesterday by Fightful, or a couple of days ago by Fightful, whenever it came out, confirming that Deonna Parazzo is going to be facing Molina at NWA Empower. It, now, with these television tapings, it confirms it is going to be for the Knockouts Championship. It does confirm that as of right now, Deonna Perrazzo isn't scheduled to face Mickey James at Empower or at the NWA 73rd anniversary or anything like that. But certainly, it does set up a possibility, I think, of uh, Deonna Perrazzo versus Mickey James in the future, probably inside of an Impact Wrestling ring. That's something that Deonna Parazzo and Mickey James have spoke openly about wanting to do. That's obviously something that Impact Wrestling want to do as well. So logic could state that possibly Deonna Parazzo versus Mickey James now happens at Bound for Glory. The, the issue that I suppose some people will say is that that is a, a reasonable amount of time away, I guess, right now. I mean, we're looking at what? You know, July, we're nearly end of July, so let's say August, August, September, October. We're talking about three months. Can Deonna Parazzo and Mickey James, I suppose, continue this rivalry into October? I think there's a possibility, and I suppose the bridge to that possibly would be Deonna Parazzo and Melina, shall we say, um, if Melina does beat Deonna Parazzo at Empower, which I don't really see the purpose of. I don't see why they would really go in that direction, to be honest, unless they wanted to, as I mentioned, to bridge that gap between now and and Bound for Glory. For me, I see Deonna Parazzo defeating Melina at NWA Empower, and then I think um, she then transitions maybe into a feud with someone in Impact themselves, and then eventually we get to Mickey James versus Deonna Parazzo at Bound for Glory. That's where I think the direction is going in. I could be wrong, uh, but what we do know is that Mickey James was at the Impact Wrestling television tapings. We know that Melina did make her Impact Wrestling television debut, confronting Deonna Parazzo and confirming that it will be Deonna Parazzo versus Melina for the Knockouts Championship at the NWA Empower event. Now, finally, one more spoiler warning uh, as we talk about the final story here. So we'll give you a little bit of a countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. 
Let's talk about the former Knockouts Tag Team Champions, Fire and Flavor. Now, I found it very surprising, very, very surprising that Fire and Flavor lost the Knockouts Tag Team Championships this past weekend at Slammiversary. But now it makes a lot of sense because uh, Fire and Flavor actually do split up during the latest set of Impact Wrestling television tapings. Yes, this, is, was, this was quite surprising, actually. Again, I was surprised just in general. When we saw that fire and flavor uh, split up in the first place, I was uh, well split. Up, so as, uh, excuse me, lost the Impact Knockouts Tag Team Championships in the first place. I was very, very shocked by that. So, at the uh, latest set of television tapings, there is a tag team match where Rachel Ellering and Jordan Grace face off against Fire and Flavor. Now, Savannah Evans shows up after the match and attacks Kira Hogan, with Tasha Steele standing over Kira Hogan and officially splitting up the tag team. Now, a lot of people are saying, well, this comes out of left field a little bit, same vein as the Knockouts Tag Team Championship loss came out of left field very surprisingly. And furthermore, I mentioned this, this, this split is very surprising too. Now, Fightful Select, which of course is their Patreon service, is reporting that Kira Hogan's contract with Impact Wrestling is reportedly up this summer. Now, they haven't confirmed if she signed a new deal or will be indeed leaving the company. Now, of course, this is, no, this is nothing new. Impact Wrestling has worked with dozens of wrestlers without a contract as of late. And I say as of late, we're going back to all the way to last year. Impact Wrestling, when it comes to contracts, you know, per appearance deals, handshake deals, etc. Impact are very, very flexible when it comes to their contracts. So this is very surprising Again, we don't know if Kira Hogan has or hasn't signed a new deal of Impact Wrestling. My thing I would look at and and be saying about this would be that if Kira Hogan had signed a new contract or there was a feeling that Kira Hogan was going to sign a new contract, I highly doubt that they would do I highly doubt that they would do a split and, you know, well not I highly doubt they would lose the Knockouts Tag Team Championships and I highly doubt that they would do a split uh, as well. So that's that's certainly very curious again and again i don't know i don't know about this this is just more this is just speculation on my part here but i would if i was to guess if you said to me kira hogan's contract is up in the summer fire and flavor have split up and they've lost the tag team championship seemingly out of nowhere you would probably lean to kira hogan might be leaving now obviously names that have been looking like leaving in the past whether it's jordan grace um sammy callahan or moose names like that previously we would have said and i did say i think they're gonna go and then eventually they resigned so anything's possible i don't know with this one it certainly feels surprising I, you know look I, I liked fire and flare as a tag team them being the the inaugural knockouts champions once they were brought back is a big deal they can't take that away from them again i felt that there needed to be some improvements in terms of promos and stuff like that um but it would be a shame to see kira hogan go i don't know realistically where she would go she certainly wouldn't be going to wwe or nxt considering the heat that is obviously there between her and sasha banks we've documented about that on the channel previously so <laughs> we can talk about that to the cows cover because there is no way that wwe are going to sign kira hogan given that history AEW is a possibility. Her partner, Diamante, does compete in AEW. Now, she was previously in the tag team with Eva Lise, but we now know that Eva Lise was released by AEW. So there certainly could be a situation where Kira Hogan comes in and is a tag team partner with Diamante. That's, that is something worth considering as well. So this whole thing kind of has come out of left field, but... Obviously, once we hear more about it, we'll cover it here on the channel. But look, guys, as always, this is just one man's opinion. What are your thoughts on all these Impact Wrestling news stories that we've spoken about today? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I'll do my best to respond and reply to all of your comments. Really enjoy interacting with you guys, talking about Impact Wrestling, talking about WWE, AEW, New Japan Pro Wrestling, all things pro wrestling here on the channel. So be sure to get involved in the community. Drop a comment below. All opinions are welcome. If you have enjoyed this video, please do smash a like on the like button too. Really does help us out here on YouTube. Got the rankings and get people's recommendations feeds if they haven't seen our videos previously but most importantly if you haven't already please do subscribe to wrestling news 365 you can do that by clicking the bottom right hand corner of the screen right now or if you wait a few seconds there'll be a subscribe button at the end of this video along with another video for you to watch thank you very much for watching listening streaming or have you come across this video today and i'll speak to you again very very soon Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.